Um, so this video is um, for me to go over uh, the syllabus with you guys and I'll show you where a few things are located. So here's the syllabus for this course and you can find the syllabus uh, among Schoology. You can find the syllabus on the introduction material, it says syllabus over here. And here's the syllabus. So this is the document that we're going to go over. So chemistry, uh, this is my extension, my email, and this is the office hours. The course overview, um, you can read this on your own. Uh, this is the units that we are going to uh, go through. And this is the standards, um, if you want to know. So common assessments, this is a tentative day. Okay. Um, this is not written in stone, so things might change, but this is just to give you an idea approximately when you're going to have your um, unit tests. I just want to point out that there will be a midterm and a final as well, but the dates, the dates have not been established yet. Textbook. This year we're going to have a textbook it's called Pearson Realize. Uh, I'm not sure whether or not you have the uh, the hard copy, but there is a virtual textbook. And uh, I'll plan on going over that um, during the orientation. But there's also an introduction material that is um, how to access your virtual textbook. And uh, the assignments will be there as well. Some of the assignments, I should say. All right, instructions. So this year is going to be slightly different. Uh, there's some terms that um, they're involved here: synchronous and asynchronous. So let's just go over what synchronous means. So during block days, uh, we're going to meet live through a Zoom meeting. And it'll be eighty minutes, um, and this is a how we're going to go about um, our lessons. Obviously, um, you will not always follow this. Um, so when you, during a block day, when you come to meet, uh, to meet us in the classroom, you're going to just press join live classroom. And then there's a schedule just in case you forget when is a block day for you. And here's the Zoom link. Okay. You won't see all of this, um, this you see in my view, but you only see the link for your period. And this is the classroom etiquette, and okay, we're going to go over that in class as well, but we need to follow those etiquettes to make sure that um, a time together is as productive as possible. Okay, so that's synchronous, so again, we're meeting live. Asynchronous lessons. Um, it's slightly different. We will not meet as as a, a Zoom meeting. What will happen is um, I will assign uh, a work for you, either practice. There will be a lot of quizzes that will uh, review content and quizzes that will be done that day. So I'll assign that for you, and you have um, 24 hours to submit it. Obviously, I'll be available during your block period or during um, your period. So if you have any questions, you can just ask me. Um, if your questions cannot be answered through the forum, and I'll show you the forum in a moment. If your ask questions cannot be answered through the forum, we can just schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting. That's totally fine. Um, so again, I'll be available to you guys. So even though I'm giving you an assignment and giving you uh, quite a bit of time to get it done, I'm still available for questions. Um, so let me show you what the form is. So right here, this says back channel chat. So here's the place where I would like for you to ask me questions about the lesson. Okay. Obviously, if you have um, a personal question or something that you don't want anyone to know, you can just email me, but 
questions about the lesson, about due dates or anything like that, um, I want you to put them in here. And the reason for that is because if you have the question, most likely a lot of other people have the same question. So for us to have a place where everyone can look at questions and who um, look at how things were answered um, is a good place to build community. The other thing is, um, and I'll talk about this during orientation, but for people that answer um, each other's questions, they'll get extra credit for that. All right, so that is synchronous and asynchronous lesson. Materials, this is all suggested uh, during live lessons. Actually, during the course, it's always good to have a, a pad or a notebook so you can keep all the information together. I highly, highly recommend it. A camera or a smartphone for pictures. There will be a lot of times I'll ask you to take a picture of something and upload it. So it would be best if you have um, a Chromebook or a smartphone for pictures. Um, a calculator. So this course has a lot of math. So I suggest that you have a calculator. Um, it's okay for you to use your phone and a computer. It's not ideal. But, you know, we are not in an ideal situation to begin with. So it's okay. Technology, um, you can go through this. If you have any questions, uh, just, again, put it on a forum. And I'll go through the Schoology login with you guys during orientation. Grading categories and policies. Um, this is per school policy. So if you want to know what an A means, what a B means, that's what it is. Uh, category weights, there are four categories um, in this classroom. Summative assessment, with, which is um, you can think as, as your final or midterm or a unit test. Assignments, those are things I posted on Schoology daily. Performance task, this counts a lot when we're meeting in person um, because those are usually labs or lab related. Formative assessment, and uh, this is mini quizzes and checking for understanding. So I will upgrade Power School twice weekly. Students' work will be graded within two weeks, um, definitely sooner than that. But sometimes, um, if there's a lot of writing involved in your assignment, it will take me a little longer. Uh, graded work and comments can be seen on Schoology, so. If you got 100%, you probably won't see any comments, or if you got a minor things, I'll point it out. But I make comments either on a document or in a power school. So if you got a grade that's not what you wish it was, um, make sure that you look at the comment. Late work policy. So this policy has changed. So be aware of that. It's not the same as last, year's, last year. Assignments turned within one week of the original day earn up to 85%. Assignments turned in within two weeks get 75%. Assignments submitted after two weeks gets no credit. Okay, so let's think about this. So say there's an assignment that's worth 10 points. Okay. And there was a due date and you missed the due date, um, the maximum you can get after the due date for a whole week is eight and a half points if the assignment is worth 10 points. Um, say it wasn't within a week, it was within two weeks, the maximum um, you would get is seven points, the maximum, right? So say you only you submitted after two weeks and you did not so good job. You only got half of the assignment done. So you only get three and a half points, right? Because you didn't you got only half of the assignment and was the maximum you could have gotten was 70. Okay, so think about that. So that emphasizes how important it is for you to submit things on time. Assignments um, that are not submitted during the due date will have a zero until you turn it in for credit. 
So my priority is to grade things that are submitted on time. So if you submitted late work, it's time stamped. So don't worry about if I grade it a week or two later. But that's the lowest priority because if you submit it late, that's your, my lowest priority in terms of grading. Okay. Um, so a few things. If you had an excused absence, um, I'll count that uh, towards, towards this. So if this was due on Monday, but you weren't there on Monday and you had an excused absence, um, obviously when you submit it, if it's a day later, um, I'll count that. Um, it's always a good idea if you know that you're going to be absent, just email me so that way I can say, hey, uh, this is when um, this is when you need to have the work turned in for full credit. Students with IP 504 and etc. Um, they get extensions based on their IPs. Again, that's something that um, I asked you guys to talk to me, not through the forum, obviously, but through an email. Corrections. Um, unit tests cannot be corrected. Everything else is fair game, but unit test, obviously midterm and finals cannot be corrected, but unit test, don't ask me to be correct, you cannot, everything else, it's fair game. Um, so how to do, say you do, you need, you want to redo a quiz um, or an assignment. Here's what I need you to do. I need you to email me uh, requesting to redo the assignment with the specific time that you are available in case of quizzes. So just send me an email, hey Ms. McCabe, I would like to redo um, quiz number one. I'll be available tomorrow at 3 o'clock and I'll open, I'll assign specifically for you when I'll open. Just keep in mind that when you redo quiz, you will be doing a whole version, a whole new version of that quiz. You won't be doing the same quiz. So then what I will do, I'll take your previous score and your new score and I'll average it out. And that's going to be your final score. 